سلام خیلی خوش اومدین همتون اگر اجازه بدیم من یکم دیگه به صحبت شروع میکنم به انگلیسی چون دوستان خارجیمون اومدن یکم دیگه وای میستیم تا همه بیان و ما شروع بکنیم Hello everybody, thank you very much for joining us today We would wait for like five minutes more in order for the for for the others to join us and then we begin the session today and then with your permission i would turn off the commenting so we could talk uh without interference and then in the end of the talk i will open the comments and we could talk and do a q a وقتی میخوایم شروع بکنیم طبق سشن های قبلیمون من کامنت ها رو میبندم و در انتها باز میکنم که دوباره چیز بکنم. آه من خودم رو معرفی نکردم. من سپهر شریف ساده هستم. مدیر روابط بین الملل آژانس تئاتر نوروز هنر، مؤسسه فرهنگ هنری نوروز هنر و کارم معرفی روابط بین الملل معرفی تئاتر به خارج از کشور و برگزاری جشنواره های مختلف. So let's see uh, we've got Tony here. Uh, I would ask Tony to join us on the call. And Tony Atard is from Malta, so let's see. Hello, Tony. Hi, am. Um. Hi, Tony. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. How are you? Very good. Oh, still, it's I'm, still day. I'm fine. Here. Can you can you hear me? Well. Yeah. Yeah, can you okay. hear me? I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to find a, a stable way how to keep my camera with my phone without jittering. It. I would suggest you books. Uh, I just put like five books behind my mobile. Uh, so this, I... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's made because of the the headphones. That's why. So, but that that's fine. So how are you? I would like you to introduce yourself first. And then we go further on with the conversation. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Tony. I'm from Malta, which is a small island in the middle of the Mediterranean, just between uh, Sicily and uh, Tunisia. Um, and I've been working in the cultural sector for the past, uh, well, 12, 12 years. Uh, so after a decade working on cultural policy, uh, working on strategies, national strategies for culture and the creative economy, Um, I decided to set up my own um, creative enterprise, which focuses on consultancy for culture and the arts, training and production. I also happen to be a theater director and an actor myself. So I... It's nice. I was very much looking forward to talk with you on, on, on the session today, just because you're, you're an expert in cultural policy, and right now what's happening around the world is all about different uh, politicians, uh, cultural bodies of the government around the board deciding what to do, like how to continue and how to revive culture because the culture is almost dead, let's, let's, let's be honest. The sad part is culture was well, born. Well, it, it, it depends what you understand by that because if there is one thing which we definitely know that some form of consumption is happening, people are reading books, people are listening to music, people are watching movies on Netflix, they're connecting, um, they're also creating their own work. Um, it's amazing how many hobbies people have tried try to bring out from their own childhood, you know? Um, so I wouldn't say it's, it's dead. Um, it has shifted, it has paused. Uh, the physical, of course, connection with that has been canceled for a lot of events and that is w w which has left financial repercussions on a lot of artists so yeah that's true like the, the physical presence of culture yeah. which is let's say the theater and cinemas are almost not accessible but everybody is doing everything so as a cultural policy maker or like a former cultural policy maker and now still am still am still, <laughs> still yeah <laughs> With the, with the cultural ventures, your companies, right? Yeah, yeah, Culture Ventures is, is, is the name of, of my firm. But so I, I work me, internationally with, with different cities and governments. So. What, uh, tell me, well, like, the second question is that what's happening in, in Malta right now regarding, like, coronavirus, not, not regarding the art, and, because Malta is, like, like let's say, in, in the news, we don't have much news in Iran about Malta, and I would like... 
the Iranian spectators as well as the European people who are watching this to know like what, what's happening in Malta? Well, um, well, today I think we registered uh, 218 cases. Um, so far, no, no deaths have been registered. Um, and for a, for a small island of close to half a million people, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's relatively stable. Um, so the situation is relatively stable, but of course the, the cases are, are increasing um, every day. Um, so it has led to the, of course, health authorities to um, make sure that a number of interventions are, are in place. Um, there isn't an official lockdown, but people are treating, I would say, self-isolation quite seriously, which is, which is great. So, so there's, there's a, a national push for, of course, certain for the vulnerable uh, people above 60 um, are being asked to. So that, that it, there is an official kind of lockdown for, for that category. But other than that, of course, the first, similar to other interventions across the world, now the, one of the first interventions was, you know, shutting down cinemas and theatres and, and spaces with, with um, public space. And, and, I, and I feel this is really interesting because a lot of politicians, um, the first measures close these public spaces. And I kept wondering, you know, well, actually, there are quite a number of theatres already in the dark and struggling to bring in an audience. So the fact that they think that most of these places are full of people all the time, unfortunately, that's not the case in quite a lot of places. So, um, but, but of course, as a public space, one would have imagined that that would be the first intervention to, to be implemented. Yeah, I just read today in the news that Sweden has, hasn't closed the cinemas yet. They are letting people go in the cinemas, but only 50 people for every seances. Yeah. Yeah, makes it a very intimate viewing, perhaps. And, and, and it's probably good for art house cinema as well, where you have smaller theatres running that. <laughs> and they said probably they would close the cinemas after mid-April because no company is, like, premiering their films. So tell me, now, that film, cinemas in Sweden, what's happening regarding art and culture in Malta? Like, what, what artists are doing in Malta? Is there any initiatives, except for yours, I mean, Yours, yeah. I would be very happy if you explain also. Yeah, so, so one of the first things I, I did was to, you know, I, I could kind of preempt. Um, I, I worked on the, on the creative industries and the creative economy within the finance ministry. So I kind of am familiar with the way governments work when they issue public support measures for all industries. And I said the only way that the immediate response would probably be the importance for the arts and culture to be in that list to actually for government to recognize that these are economic activities which require immediate support. So one of the first initiatives I took was launch a, a survey for artists to measure how much, uh, what the financial impact was on, on their work. And that was, I think, very important because it kind of set the ball rolling of a public conversation, people in the media uh, talking about also the artists uh, suffering from the financial impact because of course this was an immediate thing you know people who have worked for six months a year on their project and suddenly they realize that a source of income has immediately stopped of course um this happened with all other industries however in the arts it, it and something which has also emerged is the kind of the precarious employment which happens so the the fact that artists which i would say is is something which you find in the, across the world in a way where, where the income generated from the art form uh, for specific art or, or for a number of artists is is very small so of course if you're dependent on that and of course if you're dependent on for example public subsidy or else from income from the actual productions you're creating or income from 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 other projects and um, that was immediately uh, impacted so in that case um, there was the first measures which the government announced whereby specific sectors uh, could receive 800 euro um, even for self-employed uh, per month uh, for the current for in the current situation and artists were immediately part of that list uh, and then the film industry was included and then photographers were included so so that was the first measure um, what we also see is a response of, from public institutions like the, the Arts Council, Arts Council Malta, and institutions such as our National Theatre, um, creating programs specifically for artists, to support artists. So you get 
um, for example, the National Theatre launched this really interesting scheme whereby commissioned work will receive a 50% deposit on that work for artists who will work on these projects to start designing and thinking of them now, knowing that they have also 50% of that income from that project in, in the coming weeks. Um, so, so we were seeing these kind of responses even um, from the Arts Council, they issued a special call of the Malta Arts Fund that looks specifically at projects which will be developed in the coming weeks. So it's kind of also, so from, from a kind of immediate shock for artists, you know, because this, this was a, this is a, a huge concern of artists figuring out, you know, how do I pay my bills in the coming six weeks, two months, three months? four months, because this is something we don't know how long it's going to take. Yeah, because Canada also, like, thinking now, uh, like, in Canada, I heard they're giving 2000 a month to the artists, and they're also thinking of freezing the rents, uh, but that's not the case for many other countries. But yeah. also, I heard about uh, the Malta, Teatro Malta. Yeah. Uh, the one that's, in, that's responsible for Rubin Zara for the Malta Festival. They also, they ran a festival, right? And they are giving 800 or 900 for, for each getting accepted. No, this was the, the Teatro Malta, the National Theatre, the one I, I mentioned. So this is the 50% ah. deposit, which, which, okay. is being, which is being created. Um, and, and of course, there were kind of, you know, commitments. And this is something which, which even in my recommendations, um, even something I've discussed with, with my colleagues even across, across the world, um, it, it's not just about ensuring that uh, providing security for artists in the coming weeks and months, but also thinking about how, because the, the ripple effect is going to be quite significant in the coming year, probably, or two. Why? Because if you're an artist, depending on, for example, or working on international festivals and going on touring. So suddenly that cycle is also stopping. So, uh, you know, we, we, we're seeing this kind of repercussion and, and um, ripple effect on a lot of, uh, on the whole ecology, uh, which, is, which is going on here. So, and this is probably, I would say, one of the first, if not the first, culture policy concern which is a global concern, because probably not even the economic recession has been so common in so many countries. It has hit quite a lot of countries, but, you know, for example, even this in the case of, of, of Malta, kind of the sector was quite resilient and, and the recession did not hit us in the same way it hit other European countries. So, um, and probably for the first time ever in cultural policy making, there are a lot of measures which could be quite universal across the globe. Yeah. So respective on whether there are public funding programs or not, um, I think the issue of independence or independent artists being quite precarious in that kind of employment pattern and, and dependent on, on the gig economy, for example, now moving from one project to another, that's quite universal. And of course, different countries respond to that in a different way. Some uh, provide a kind of universal basic income, so that provided some kind of support, which was there. Um, others have, you know, uh, unions and associations that support artists. Uh, in some situations, none of this exists. So, so it also creates. And, and what we really want is to give confidence for artists not to run away from their profession when all this is over and saying, you know what? I think I'm going to just find a day job and get on with my life and figure out my own stability. Definitely. There was this quote that says, uh, yeah, you think art doesn't work something? Try to stay at home without with no books and movies and exactly. shows and music. So that's true. Exactly. Art can survive. And that's, that's exactly. also why you decided to do this festival. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Thank I you. Guess Almost 15 minutes, and ah, I need to... You should have been 10 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. I, I would have loved to continue talking with you as a cultural policymaker. So maybe we could arrange some other time. I think our audience oh, would love that. Thank, Thank you very you much. So. Thanks. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye. So let's see. I would need to add here Nazli Tabotaboy Khatanbakhsh from the UK. I just added you to... Uh, Salam, Chef Ahmad. 
Sorry, everybody. Uh, I was talking with Nazni in Azerbaijan in my language because she's from the same town as my mom, and we never met each other by in person. And like you know, the first time, it would have been nice to talk in Azerbaijan with some. Uh, no, I, I can see someone is sending their hearts. That's oh, really nice. I think also from super. Azerbaijan. <laughs> so, Nazli John, please introduce yourself. I would really appreciate and let's go on. Sure, absolutely. Um, first, it's a, it's a real gift and a pleasure to be part of this connection um, in, the, in, in its widest sense and in its absolute one-to-one -one person sense. So, first, thank you to you and to everyone involved. Um, so my practice is as an artist, um, primarily in live arts, stage-based work. And I'm also a scholar and an advisor um, that has given me windows into small-scale work, large-scale um, international practices between many countries and sometimes on a one-to-one -one basis as well. Um, I was really struck by a couple of things that Tony said. Could I touch on that? Would that be okay? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there was, there was three things that stood out for me in particular. One was his point on childhood. There was something quite beautiful about that for me in terms of where we are globally in meeting the context that we find ourselves in. This tide that has turned has brought crisis and trauma for some for the first time. And for others, it is a lived experience that they have many templates for. Um, I was also struck by uh, when yourself and Tony were talking about programming in terms of time scales. When, what does postponement mean? In different uh, time zones and places that some people are saying, sure, we're going to reopen again in August. Or some people are saying November. Some people are talking about 18 months time. There's a real sensitivity there, I think, um, and what that means in terms of cycles. And the other, and the last point that, I, that really interested me um, in your dialogue was about what happens to the artist, how the artist is making work and approaching work. Um, I've noticed here across the UK in, in the conversations I've been having that there's an index. On one end, you've got excellent equitable practice, a real sense of collaboration, um, a camaraderie, if you like, that isn't um, only in theatre or in dance or in sculpture, it's across the art form, something quite stunning, we're having quite a moment. I am mindful not to romanticise that though, I don't wish to romanticise that whatsoever. Then on the other end of the scale, there's something that's happening which is almost a sort of smash grab rebrand culture people are seeing things that they like the look of but are somehow forgetting to take a moment and speak to that artist and say hey this is your work this is great i'd like to do something like it could we do something so there's something of a of a chaos in amongst all the calm of the creativity that i'm really that i'm really attracted to at the moment And what's happening also, like, on your side? Um, your so, sure. Content. I thought it might be useful to give a bit of a, an insight into my into the last 10 days, if I may, just to give you sort of highlights of where I've been and what I've been noticing. Um, so... Um, the thing is that the sad news is that... Absolutely. The festival yeah. has been cancelled for 2020. It's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking, but I... I would also say that the courage of our cultural managers and thinkers and artists to recognize at this time for us to take a, a pause as opposed to press on and in some in in a way that is escalated uncertainty wouldn't be in the spirit of what I love most about our festivals in Edinburgh during August. There needs to be a sense that people can feel safe to take artistic risk. So our safety must come first. 
And I know that the festivals will come through stronger and brighter despite it of this, not because of it, but despite of it. But yeah, but very long time from now to decide for it. That's a lot of courage. Absolutely. I think it demonstrates a sense of a real understanding of business continuity. I think it demonstrates an understanding that actually every artist globally is having to make this decision based on a, on local understanding and on what internationalism means to them. Um, there's something in there that is about the, the grace to know when it is wise to take a breath. And I think there's a real difference between risk and danger. There's a real difference. There's a really potent difference there. Um, and there's a difference between being fragile and vulnerable. These things are very different. Um, and I'm seeing those conversations resonating, whether that's within international networks or within conversations in my role as a board member in terms of how people are approaching ideas around supporting artists, whether it's about the the taking up of the governmental support or whether it's about being able to apply for the new funding streams that have come through specifically responding to artists needs and organizational needs and of course it would be remiss of me not to take a moment to acknowledge that of course this isn't going to come to everybody's rescue but this is where our acumen to be able to think beyond ourselves in the culture sector is going to come into play. Being able to look out for each other and to ensure that we are connecting, to ensure that we are in regular contact, I hope will go towards some way of eliminating harm. And, and also, the, yeah, that's true, and also the distances. Yeah. So on, on that note of, of connecting that you mentioned, what what do you personally or like the people in the cultural body in, in Scotland mm. think about? Is there any online activities and what do you generally think about sure. online activities like? Uh, because there are like you know lots of pro and cons and a lot of people doesn't like it. Sure. They prefer the connection. I mean, of course, you know we are inevitably about liveness. This is why we're, we are excited by liveness, the ephemeral. We're excited by something that is only possible, but with a unique number of people in a specific word with a specific moment. So I will always champion liveness, but uh, intermediality is something that our generations of artists have grown up with. And it's part of our vocabulary. It's part of our palette of making. Do I think that every artist must now immediately jump online and present some work in a digital format? My goodness, no. In the same way, I wouldn't expect someone to suddenly change their practice on a whim. If it's there for you, that it's coming to you as a, as a point of inspiration, if you feel that it's, it's the time to expand your craft in this direction, yes, absolutely. And it is taking place, it is happening. It's happening at large corporate scale. It's happening at large national scale, but it's also happening on a very grassroots level, people creating work that are really short pieces of drama or of um, dance theater or very small pieces of circus work are happening. But what I'm, what I'm interested in in this time is how that, one-to-one -one recorded experience of something that is live will then translate into how we welcome people back into their theatres and dance houses and cinemas and galleries. How will this movement be part of the storytelling of, I'm almost hesitant to use the word return because we're always moving forwards. We're always moving, we're in a forward trajectory. So in anticipation of the horizon, what moments will we remember to take with us of this kind of one-to-one -one engagement that is absolutely nourishing more than just the two people involved in it? 
that's what could keep our spirits up and also help us to overcome this very hard time of self-isolation or yes. forced isolation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to also acknowledge that this has enabled people to really question their craft. And that's, that's exciting. That matters. Yeah. And as also Tony mentioned, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's about creativity, like boosting creativity, but generally Tony was talking about the, the world and the cultural sector experiencing such a global pandemic for the first time after many years. So l like, let's, let's be optimist and say, may it happen like it happened after the World War that Edinburgh Festival established and began working and also Avignon. Like, let it be that bigger cultural events happen or people come together to do more great things. Absolutely, absolutely. The tide will turn. There is an inevitability. Anything that remains exact um, and does not adapt becomes fragile and breaks. So this sense of movement, this um, humanity has faced this in lots of different ways. Some things we've created ourselves and some things have, have come to pass because of nature, of course. Progress and innovation, yes, absolutely. A sense of imagination, yes, despite of all things. And we will experiment and we'll find new things and we'll discover what meant had meaning in the moment, but inevitably this um, global experience that we're having will shift us into a new era of practice. Absolutely. Of course. Of course. Think of the artists that are just starting to make work now. And this will be their normal, if you like. If you like. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Better that way, it's all my own. Mercy, mercy. Feeling for the harvest. So, uh, now I would like to invite a friend of us, Eric Söderblom, all the way from Finland. So, Eric, if you can hear me, I just added you again to the conversation. Let's see if it's turned better this time. Ah, okay. Hello, can you hear me? Oh yes, it's perfect. Okay, I, I tried with my iPad, but it seems the phone is better after all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for, for inviting to this very interesting, interesting, and I, I congratulations for, for putting together the festival also this week. It's a very important initiative. Thank you very much also for joining us and for supporting this yeah. idea. So how are you doing? Would you introduce yourself yeah. to the audience who are watching? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I will, I will do it uh, quickly. Uh, I'm a theater and opera director. Um, been working, doing a lot of things, founding a theater, founding a festival, leading several festivals. The biggest of them uh, was the kind of Edinburgh of, Scandinavia or, or the Nordic countries, Helsinki Festival, uh, which I was leading for six years. Now I am the director of uh, Espo City Theatre, which is actually the only European style production house in Finland. We do our own things, but we also invite performances from abroad ev every year. <clears throat> oh. And also, you, you were also one of the co founders of Baltic Circle, right? That's true, yes. That's true. Along with you, Hude. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also mm -hmm. worked. I also worked as professor for acting and as and vice rector for the theater academy in Finland. Yeah, Hude was in Iran during the Patch Festival in February, and he was, He had a, a presentation where he introduced the Finnish theater and the cultural body of Finland. What's happening in Finland, which was very informative. So. Okay. You. It was very nice, and I, I think everybody enjoyed knowing who you are and also what you are doing. So, uh, what's happening exactly, Eric, in Finland? Because Finland, like generally the north northern Europe, uh, we don't get that much news from them. 
like like yesterday i read something from sweden but not from finland so what's the mm-hmm. situation in finland uh well i think uh in the big picture we do the same things try the same things as everybody else there's a lockdown for for uh, traffic out of the um, capital area where the most people live and also the most uh, uh, most infections right now are and there's a quarantine people are, are told to be at home no restaurants open no theaters open so i think the measurements and the, the strategy to cope with this is basically uh there are variations of the same of course finland is a small country and we we are not that badly hit yet what they generally speak uh try to do is to to make this curve of rising rising infections to go a bit lower uh, to have uh, to secure a, a a treatment for everybody that gets sick not to get in a situation that ha- anybody has to cho- choose whom to treat and whom not wow. of course of course for the artists uh, uh, as tony tony said uh, very interesting spo- talks both both by Tony and Nasli by the way thank you very much for that and informative uh um i mean there are the the performing arts field is is roughly divided structurally in two in finland we have the kind of official the big theaters uh with with a kind of long term sub- subsidies from from city and state and then we have the free field with groups that get their money production wise or annually and uh, and in the big theaters uh, people are on monthly salaries and in the small theater people uh, have kind of more like work, freelancers working and uh, the big theaters still speak sp- speaking have had bigger challenges to reschedule their programs and also if they have a big big crew of actors that now cannot cannot kind of since they don't have income since there are no no uh, theaters open some theaters have have uh, well, how do you call it this lay lay off with the people uh, out for a while to 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 be able to to cope with the situation economically small groups have in a way a bit easier for example my theater we haven't been able we haven't been forced to 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 put out anybody uh, at least yet because we don't as we work with only freelancers and our core team is quite small and and we don't have that big uh, let's say continuous continuous uh, kind of payment, payments payments to do yeah but actually i mean i would uh, listening to to tony and Lastly, I would like like to take a third kind of angle to this. Instead of, I think we we have the same challenges everywhere. People, I mean, there, there are economical challenges. People have are struggling, you know, speaking over the world, and I think the worst is still still to come, really. But uh, I I really try to focus also to keep keep my own mind kind of active and and creative to uh, to see. what possibilities this situation gives because there are some also nasli also touched touched it but i somehow think this is uh, we are rehearsing for the future in a way thinking of thinking <laughs> thinking of of, of the sustainability and the, the climate change and, and and things like this there there if we really want to cope with the climate change we we, we will need some kind of of restrictions in traveling restrictions in many many things so uh, and and uh, generally speaking i mean if there is restriction somewhere there is a new freedom opening up there's there are things to, that that you can do uh, within the kind of a restricted uh, area of of existence that you cannot do in in this so called freedom so for example um uh well what what's interesting right now with this we have actually been been trying to well, what we did we, when when this happened was first of all to to we would have had a premiere on on the friday uh the same day as, uh, as the world theater day 
but of course we couldn't have it. But instead, two days before, we documented this run through with with three cameras and made a made a kind of uh, as 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 good a, a documentation as we as we could, and then we streamed that instead on the on the day of the premiere, and we had. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, we had 4,000 spectators for the stream, much more than we would ever have had in the theater. So, <laughs> and, uh, and there are many places in Finland that are so far away that you really cannot, cannot get to the theater uh, on, on a weekly or even monthly basis. So this might lead, uh, if it goes the interesting and right and creative way, to, to a situation where, where people, theater, theaters learn to stream their performances to, to do to do good good documentation, so good streaming. But it's a, it's also a technique to to do it well, and and mm-hmm. and which allow would allow people to to that otherwise wouldn't have a possibility to go to theaters to see to see theater. And also, uh, we have been trying to put up a kind of a, we call it channel X, that would be a, a kind of window through which. People from their homes, creative uh, uh, performing arts artists from from their homes, from from quarantine. So actually, the Finnish people are pretty friendly with the on- online activities and digital. Yeah, I, well, yes, of course. Yeah, I, I would say big big companies have been using these split screen co- uh, team team meetings for a long time. Of course, international companies, but it now comes to ordinary people. Learning Teams and learning Zoom and learning for Instagram this way and all those things. So it, I think it will affect what we can do in the future. But I, we 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 are actually trying to. Let's put it this way. Uh, as Tony also said, there are di- there are different actions taken to to support artists uh, now f- financially, and uh, which has led to a situation that there, there are hundreds, thousands of artists doing some kind of work instead of being just jobless for and apply, uh, applying for these this kind of different forms of grants that are now uh, formed, uh, which, uh, which is uh, in a way, of course, nice, but, but something that we try to do is to put up a, a group, we are a, a group of friends of mine and, and me to put up a kind of platform for to to include a window platform an opening for the whole uh, performing arts arts field in a way to to a, a domain a portal. Is this the one the house in, like artist in house residency? Yeah, that's 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 that's, uh, that's one way. I mean, but I we try to to. To put up a channel that that would be open, let's say, seven days a week for for five day, five hours every week with a program, of that where artists could come come out with what they can do at home. You can do many things. You can you can you can juggle in in your 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 shower. You can dance in your kitchen. You can make like like installation on the balcony. But also, let's say we can do split screen play reading with 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 members from from different countries over the world suddenly right it's really great and and we can we can have i know there's one guy who together with 48 other actors has done a kind of chain reading of of the monologue of hamlet so they kind of so they kind of yeah so they they, they divide it and then they kind of do it on, on, that online that would be something explained yeah, so there are things you can do. I mean, this, of course, will never be the same. It's a different kind of, you know, different art form in a way than the live theater. But, but, uh, but maybe it's the most interesting that you, we, we all doing theater know that the process is most, many, many times the most interesting part of, of the job. Of course, we can end up in a performance that we show to the audience. But, but this kind of, this not being ready it's very interesting. This rough, the material, and now basically we can op- open up the, the 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 kind of draft situation and this raw raw material. If, let's say to have public 
rehearsals, reading, analyzing of text that we will produce next year, or uh, you know, but we do it publicly as a kind of widened, widened uh, audience outreach in a way. Or, or you know, all those things. So there are, there are many things that we actually can do. Of course. We, we need to challenge the situation, but also take off some... I mean, this is a very tricky topic to talk about, but let's, let's say, let's, let's arrange a time with you to talk about this challenge during the festival, because now I, I need to invite the next guest. Yes. Okay, I'll talk with my colleagues. We would arrange a day for you to talk about the pro and cons of the online activity. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Say hi to your uh, family. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Yes, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So the next person is uh, Raluca Radulescu. Uh, I would invite you, Raluca, now to our talk. Uh, Raluca is from Romania. She She's a curator, producer. I'll let her introduce herself. Servus. Ce faci? Bună. Bine. 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 Bine ați venit pentru la festivalul nostru. Mulțumesc pentru invitație. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Sorry everybody that I we spoke Romanian. Um, so Raluca, uh, thank you for coming as I said. And please introduce yourself to us and to the people who are watching. Well, I'm journalist in Romania. I'm working in the theater field mostly. And I'm translator for the theater as well from Russian. Um, and I'm curating some festivals in Romania. And I'm working with many, many people who are working in the theaters, with all the theaters in Romania. So, and that, which means like, one, and, one, and you've been to Iran how many times? Two times already or three times? Uh, two times. Two times for the puppet festival and for the patch festival last year. Yes, yeah, exactly. And so let's say uh, I know that in Romania the situation hopefully is not as severe as Italy, Germany, uh, France, or the America. So tell, would you tell us how what's happening in Romania? And also then let's go to the art and culture. Um, we have like uh, three thousand five hundred. Cases of and hundred and fifty more or less dead. Um, curated three hundred and something. Now uh, we have two cities closed in quarantine. Yes, uh, we have many people in quarantine because they are coming from Italy, Spain. Germany, we have uh, many people in uh, diaspora in Europe, that's why, and they are still coming back home. It's not a, the worst situation, but it's not so good. It's somehow in the middle, let's say. And for the theater, I don't know, I, I continue in, in, to work. I have my program about uh, theater ev almost every day. It's every day program, but it's also about uh, movie. And um, Romanian theater, it's quite working. It's working a lot, I think, now. Uh, of course, all the theaters are closed. Everything is closed in Romania. Only pharmacies and... Aliband stores are open, of course, uh, but uh, online um, working, it's in Romanian theaters, it's really working. Um, I think there are too many um, online programs now. Um, I, I have m more information that I used to have before that. And it's sometimes it's difficult to to talk about on the radio because it's complicated to choose what to talk about. That's they are really interesting. Yes, they are really interesting shows from I don't know twenty years ago that I didn't saw, but they are they are putting online the, the uh, some shows that they have the premiere like two months ago, and it's a long debate about that if it's okay or not. Of course, they cancel some festivals who supposed to be in April or May. Um, 
I don't know. The the government it's it's the first time in the history when the Romanian government is thinking about the situation of these independent or freelancers, people who are working in the cultural field, and they are um, they intend to pay uh, like five hundred euros a month for all of them. Of course, they are they supposed to to do something for that to explain why, but it's possible to receive those money. Uh, it's quite complicated for independent artists, freelancers, and we have as well some uh, fundraising uh, to pay the rent for young artists, for example, really well-known artists, yes. They organize the crowdfunding um, in, in the internet, and uh, they have until now, I don't know, maybe 20,000 euros or 20,000 lay. I don't know exactly. I, I, uh, because they are every, every day more and more money um, for the young artists and they are helping each other. But the problem is, for the moment, I don't know how it will be next, they start to close not only the theaters who are working now online, but uh, not they don't continue to pay um, the check of the people working in the theaters. Uh, it will be like I don't know. They are like unemployed for for some time, and they receive a part of their salaries. We don't know for a month or two or something like that. And then we'll see how this continue. We don't know for the moment. And it's quite complicated because, of course, they want to, to keep the public closed and they continue to work even if they, they are not paid. But I think it's a good idea for them to, to work. It's, it's helping for, for the public and for, for them, themselves. I think when we work in this situation, it's better than not working, stay at home and doing what. So I think it's... It's a good energy in the Romanian theater if even uh, people are afraid or are panicked or are optimistic and it's kind of complicated it's, it's some it's, it, they have better days worse days we have for the Romanian radio when, when where I'm working a campaign uh, stay home of course it's like that and I made many many interviews with Romanian uh, artists and they are positive let's say not not necessarily optimistic but positive let's try to do whatever we can do and i think people are staying home are doing what they supposed to do and let's hope that will be better yeah, it's important yeah. what will be after this situation yeah the, this is the main concern that everybody's talking about the post corona the post apocalyptic Ex days and i like because here in Iran, some groups and like some theater groups are also uh, thinking concerning about the children's welfare at house. Because we are always, as adults, we are always thinking about ourselves. But uh, the children are also important. They get bored more, much faster than us. And as for Romania, I heard there is an initiative by Adrian, by, by Tibu in the Gong Theater of Sibiu for the children, right? Yes, and uh, in Sibiu, and not only, they have uh, these programs online for the children, how to make a puppet, for example. And more than that, another th uh, puppet theater in Craiova, they have a program, online program for parents and grandparents to see how to make a puppet and how to write a story for your uh, children or grandchildren, or how to... Uh, say a story or use um, uh, shadow theater home at home so yes they, they have many many initiatives and they have really good programs for children my my friends who are children and uh, they uh, they told me that they have a real theater every morning in the house for for the children organize some put in uh, some um, chairs like in the theater like in a real theater making some i don't know not so much light and doing something to feel to have the feeling for like in the normal theater yes it's a, it's a, they are really well organized 
That's really good because Romania was one of the. This is I'm I'm talking with not with Raluca but with the people who are watching. As as a person who used to go to Romania often, I would say Romania was one of the countries that I noticed that they're doing a lot of activities online. They have different events, festivals, uh, these programs that Raluca mentioned as well. That's why I asked Raluca to talk about them because I think Raluca, as a person who works in the radio, especially for theater program. She would be the best person to explain what's happening in Romania. So yeah, it's it's, uh, it's so much to talk about, but I'm more concerned about what will be after. Yeah, exactly. So let's me just uh, I I think let's let's disconnect and then okay. connect again because now it's getting fifty three minutes and okay. I want Instagram to. Okay. To okay. Be, yeah, and let let's come back again. Hi again. Luca, hi. So just something for for the audience who are watching. Uh, after the whole session finish, we will open the comment section. So, and I think most of our guests, Tony, Raluca, Eric, uh, uh, Jakob will be here, and also Nasli. So uh, you you could have the stage to ask any question, and we would bring them on to to respond to that question. So sorry, Raluca, for the interruption. Let's go again. <laughs> It's okay. I I'm still here. What was your last question or next question? The the next question would be is um, like what are the artists in Bucharest doing? I know about Sibiu Craiova also like uh from Svenza Georgia. So what's mm -hmm. happening exactly in Bucharest regarding the art and culture because it's the capital and like also if, if if anything special from the government is happening in the cultural section uh yes the ministry of culture made a program about uh, for for artists and uh, they don't have a deadline but you can apply and the most interesting part is that you can apply for an online content you don't need to to make an event after coronavirus or you can do it now and can be online. Um, yes, uh, a few days ago it was the deadline for application for uh, for projects for in the freelancer artist. And more than that, the National Theatre in Bucharest they have now like the official holiday of the year, and they intend to to restart the the season when this will finish. And to have a summer season, uh, and all the artists in the other theaters are working from home, small videos, and they are, they have partnership with uh, many schools in in Bucharest and all over the country uh, to work with, uh, with uh, children who are home, readings and so on for them. So there are quite many things. Mm, just right now, I was thinking that I will don't I don't have I will not have about what to talk about on the radio during this time. But I think it's a moment not only to think what to, we do next, but as well to to do things just right now. So we this need, is the, the situation in Bucharest as well. We need we need to survive after all. No, we need to survive. Yes. Of course. So, thank you very much. I think I would say goodbye to you and Lara Medere, and I would invite Lara you to see you Yacht. soon. Bye. You. Bye. Yeah. Bye. So, everybody, I would now we would have Jakob Lohmann, uh, German from Italy, actually. Jakob, I just sent you a request for joining my live feed. Hello. Can you hear me properly? Yes, yeah, I can hear you properly and I can see you. Nice. So how are you, Jakob? Uh, would you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, first of all, I'm good. Um, I'm an artist from Germany, um, but I'm living and studying in Italy, in Bologna at the moment. And I'm obviously stuck here for that at the moment. Um, the reason why I came to Italy was a program I'm doing here. It's an interdisciplinary performance training. Um, next to that program, I had planned to be on tour as well, though. 
um, over the last month already and for the rest of the year, obviously, as well, for which pretty much everything has been cancelled now. It, that, that's really sad, and especially because you're in Italy. Uh, tell me, Jakob, uh, like Italy now, it's like in the forefront of this war after the United States, actually. But as, as an artist living there, as, as a foreigner, as a foreign artist who lives in Italy, do you get any benefits? Is there any funding program that you could apply? Um, also, also, in Italy. If you could tell the initiatives that you began with your friend, uh, began, it would be very... Ex um, concerning fundings, um, I'm not receiving any funding or anything from Italy. Um, as a German citizen, though, and my own company is also registered in Germany, so I did apply and received some fundings from Germany. At the moment, they are just saying yes to every application, essentially, uh, to help the artists as quickly as possible and just give them the money. And later on, then, in a few months, etc., it will be checked who was actually eligible to get those fundings, etc., so that we will see then. But does it mean that they get back the money that they just gave you? Uh, yes, that would mean that. Um, either the total amount, if somebody applied with whatever, um, but as well, depending on how much you needed it and stuff, it can also be that they ask back for certain parts of the money, which I think is just fair. Ah, I see. So, oh. Uh, would you tell us, I think everybody would be very interested to hear what you are doing actually in Italy, because how, this is how we uh, met with uh, Jakob. So, yeah. you go on. Um, it was a few, almost a month ago now, I think, where all of Lombardia was suddenly closed off and in lockdown. And it was as well a weekend where I was supposed to be in Belgium performing, but that was cancelled um, because I was traveling from Italy and they were too afraid of me bringing the virus to them. And I came up essentially with the initiative on Facebook called Artists in Quarantine and created a Facebook page there with the aim to just form a community and a platform for people to exchange their situation, to talk with each other. And within just a few days, we had people from various places all over the world. I got to speak with you as well. I got to speak with people from China. We talked with some people from Wuhan, where the virus originated. And we're just exchanging their situations and the idea with this whole platform is really just to show artists to show people to not focus on okay what are they doing right now and are they still making art but just it's people and they are in trouble right now so let's show them because they're all kind of in the same situation of losing their jobs losing their workplaces etc See, and is there, like, in, in Italy, is there any, anything that the cultural body, the cultural policy makers are doing regarding the artists, like the, mainly the freelancers and the artists who are at house? Um, there have been a few different financial helps being rolled out now. Um, from what I understand, though, for the other people here in the house that I'm living in, it seems to be very confusing and some stuff popped up and then the website where you could apply was suddenly down because too many requests and there was a problem with data being visible of other people and it feels very chaotic at the moment from what I can tell as an outsider in that sense. But it's really nice Italian people are keeping their spirits up, you know, it's like 
very warm with all the videos. Yes. This is the first time I saw this video of the Italian people who were singing together from the balcony. I almost cried. It was very touching. Indeed. But also do that in your neighborhood. Also in my neighborhood. It was, as far as I know, everywhere. At least I've seen videos from pretty much all the different regions all over Italy. And I think it's beautiful that this is happening and it's still going on. Uh, there is less, obviously, um, but it's still happening and I think that's really beautiful. And there is both the singing going on as well as applause for hospital workers, etc. And what I feel is working really well here in Italy concerning that is that all these actions are really not well, they are obviously as well as saying thank you to all the people that are keeping the country going, people working in supermarkets, etc. But it's as well much more a thing of let's come together and do something and we can stand through this together. And this is what is really touching to me in that sense. That there are those two points to those flash mobs of the applause and the last days I heard a lot of people from the UK with posts saying, okay, stop applauding for us, we need masks and equipment. Which, yes, definitely. But those flash mobs have another function, and that is to bring people together. And for that, I think it's very beautiful. And it's this same idea that we have with uh, Artists in Quarantine Initiative, to bring people together through the internet on a global scale and be a platform for people from everywhere to exchange. And uh, definitely beautiful. Is there any artistic initiatives like other than yours besides what you did with the artists in quarantine uh, that happens right now in Italy with the artists? The like internet connection wasn't very good right now. Nick. Is it for me? Do you yes. hear me? Now you. Oh, okay, perfect. So, I was saying, is there any artistic initiatives or is there any artistic activities that the artists in Italy are uh, either initiating or involving? You know, like not like what you're doing exactly, mainly like uh, like in Shanghai in the beginning of this pandemic, the Dramatic Art Center of Shanghai. Some of our friends, Lin Fo and the others, they've been engaging in making masks and also working some of them for the medical teams. Um, I don't know exactly for other regions so much concerning that. Um, here in Bologna, from what I hear and what I see is that some of the dance schools uh, that are existing here and the different theaters are very aware now of their online presence. And as in most other places as well, they're trying to continue classes online to keep people active. And many theaters publish shows on the internet and museums have arranged virtual guides going through. Um, so those kind of actions I see a lot happening if there have been more practical actions, I can't say at the moment. I'm not aware of them. Okay. So um, I, I will just open the comments. So if there is any question from Jakob, feel free to ask. And then from the other guests, as far as I can see, Nazli is already here, and also Raluca and also Eric. So feel free to ask. And from the, if there's any foreign guests, of course there are, who is watching this live, they would like to add something to this conversation. Feel free to send a request for live. But uh, yeah, before any, anybody send a question, like still we're waiting for the question. Another question: As a person who, like before this pandemic, you used to be a circus actor, you used to work in contemporary circus, which is pretty physical, I would say. Now you are totally in isolation, this physical isolation from what you love. Uh, but still, you initiated an activity online. What do you think about this whole pro and cons of online activities? And like, you know, Gandini juggling put their show online. Everybody loved it. I personally loved it. The show was fast. 
um, I think like if the artists themselves share their work and want to share their work, I think it's beautiful to make it public for people to have something to watch over this time. For that, I think it is great. Um, concerning online classes, I'm a bit bipolar about it. Um, the course I'm doing in Italy, they started as well since last week to do online classes. And I think those online classes are great for motivating people to do something. For that, I think they're very good because, yes, you come together with more people and it's easier to be motivated. Um, in the sense of physical classes, though, I think the educational factor for a contemporary dancer, for example, or a circus artist is not that big because First of all, everybody is in a different situation during those classes. Some people have more space, some people have less space, uh, which makes it very difficult to structure a class uh, for the teachers. At the same time, it is a very different situation for the student as well. It is You don't just see the other people doing the exercises as well, but you do it for yourself and between exercises you have a look at the screen and see what's happening next and you just see the teacher so there the feedback loop is in a way interrupted that's at least how i feel it and i think for online classes we need to instead of trying to do the same thing that we do in the normal classes but online we have to find and develop a different language in a way to get the same thing out of it again. So there's its good and its bad sides to it, I think. It just depends on what you want to get out of it. Yeah, definitely. It was a very interesting article that we were talking with Tony the other day. And the article was published uh, talking about this is totally normal to feel pressed and fearful about the situation and you don't need to be productive uh, to to feel alive it's like it's it's okay to take a rest yes and actually we were talking with my colleagues that this article is, is exactly about is, is talking to people like us and Jakob okay take it easy well, I've, I've been training for myself and together with my girlfriend uh, with been doing some physical exercises but not because we feel we, we have to be productive but because we feel better afterwards it is nice to be a bit physically active and it's for that that we do it and at the same time artistically i haven't produced anything artistically and i don't feel the need to because there's so much happening i don't feel the need to put yet another artistic comment on it, um, personally. But I'm very maybe happy to see many people reacting, and it's very beautiful to see. I'm saying maybe for the big edition of the festival. So, let's see, I, I can see some people here, like uh, Atsushi is here. Hello, oh, Atsushi. Uh, arigato for watching our live. We will talk with Atsushi Kakumoto from Japan tomorrow. Uh, Yulia Gregoria from Romania is here, and Lakshmi Ramanan from India is here, who is actually a co-curator of, of the festival. Uh, let's see, Lakshmi, do you would like to join the live feed to tell us about what's happening in India right now? You can put your comments below so I can know if you're interested or not. So there's no comments from Lakshmi. I... And it is... It is there was an accident, a funny one. So, okay, there's no more questions. If there's no more notes, I think there are more. Lakshmi is saying, ah, I think there's a delay here. Okay, Jakub, thank you very much. Vielen uh, Dank. And be safe. Stay safe and do what you're doing best.
<laughs> thank you and good luck for the festival. I'm looking forward. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Okay, I would just ask Lakshmi to join us, and then we're almost finished. Hello. Hello. How are you, Lakshmi? I'm doing good. How are you? Very good. Thank you for joining us. Everybody, Lakshmi is from India, and she's one of, the, along with her colleague Mira, uh, Mira Krishna. They are co-curators of the program of our festival. So, Lakshmi, other than the curation, please introduce yourself. Um, hi. So, I um, I'm from India, and I've been working in the art. I'm an arts manager. Uh, I do a lot of freelance work, and I've been here for the last two years, uh, slowly exploring. And uh, this time has been uh, a lot of things has been happening, a lot of changes. Um, again, a lot of events got cancelled, postponed. Um, it's pretty much the same as all over. Uh, I'm really glad that uh, uh, so many steps have been taken across all over the world, uh, at Malta, at uh, Germany, in Romania. It's, it's really heartwarming. Uh, in India, things are slightly different because uh, the funding here is not um, as much as uh, other. We don't have a established arts council, so uh, the freelance artists and everybody have their um, their work and their funding getting affected. Their day-to-day -day, uh, living uh, situation is is not as great as we would like to say. But uh, that's more for the younger artists. Uh, hope for the others. It's it's slightly better and. Uh, um, but in, in other terms, it, it, it does open up, opens up a lot of opportunities, uh, for especially uh, for someone who's up and coming uh, like me, because I get to uh, be a part of a lot of conversations, which otherwise I wouldn't have access, uh, uh, including the Reconnect Festival and other webinars, which are, which are, which are re really giving an insight as to how to think about uh, going forward and how uh, personally and otherwise. So, um, yeah. And, and would you like to tell us about this initiative that you're running with Mira about the mental health of the artist through the Prakriti Foundation? Yes, so uh, working with the Prakriti Foundation, uh, Mira Krishnan uh, and um, Ramir Shah is the, curator of the, uh, uh, is the curator of the idea. So we started off uh, talking to a lot of artists and there was a lot of need uh, we felt that art artists needed access to a lot of mental health. This was going on pre-corona. Uh, we wanted to do an offline um, festival uh, across 20 cities in India and taking, for, uh, taking the conversations uh, through India and all, all over. But up at this juncture where uh, we, we are not able to do that, we thought we'll migrate online. So uh, we're reaching out to various organizations, uh, not just in India, but around the world. Uh, we're reaching out to artists, mental health professionals, and the idea is to uh, look and see if we can uh, bring in, uh, make therapy accessible. And in India, there's a stigma associated with uh, mental health uh, so much more. So uh, the, it, it is two-phased. One, to uh, address the stigma through artistic interventions by making conversations more frequent and uh, uh, common and another way making uh, therapy uh, more accessible because uh, in, in Indian uh, in Indian rupees any, a, a good therapist costs anywhere between 800 to 1000 minimum which is a lot of uh, which is really high uh, so we're looking at uh, reaching out to various people a lot of them are interested and uh, we're slowly building conversations resources around uh, the bring in awareness and, and sort of, you know, connecting to people in this situation on mental it's health, a, yeah. It's a very interesting initiative, everybody. You could, uh, sometimes we, we also, like, repost their story on, on our stories, the posts that they are putting on their, on their web, uh, on their Instagram page. I really suggest you to watch it because they are really influential and, like, uh, heartwarming what, what they're doing and the sentences that they are posting on their Instagram page. Thank you very much, thank Lakshmi. Thank you so much. Right. Just a nice talking to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you very much everybody. خیلی ممنونم از همتون که اومدین. ببخشید که به زبان انگلیسی بودش و ترجمه همزمان نداشتش. 
ولی ما داریم تلاشمون میکنیم برای اینکه ویدیوهای این صحبت ها رو بعدا با زیرنویس روی وبسایتمون یا روی صفحات مجازیمون مثل یوتیوب و فیسبوک بذاریم uh, thank you for coming here i was just telling the iranian audience that we would we are trying our best to put uh, put the videos from these pages uh, from these sessions online with the subtitle on our web pages on facebook and hopefully f- with, with some fundings for for the website that we are going to do we have a comment saying we have to get ready for online stuff after all this craziness Mo, uh, most happens in this going in internet service this is a great practice yes of course I mean I'm, I'm totally I totally agree with you I wouldn't say like as also uh, like your Saman upper said also we need to take some rest and like you know not doing anything that's true as well it's also I, I believe there there's a difference of responses by any person. Uh, some some people just need to take rest. I personally, I was talking with a friend of mine saying my mind has never been more active in my life uh, that it is now during these also like these crazy days of pandemic, the global pandemic. So I believe it's it's the right of every person, every individual person to to choose whether they would like to rest or they would like to challenge the current situation and try to boost their creativity and develop the cultural uh, section i personally i'm much into fighting the coronavirus the depression that coronavirus would bring because uh two days be- uh, two days before they call it uh, they they like publicize the coronavirus we were supposed to have a festival running in yazd the puppet festival uh, for the first edition in yazd and because of the coronavirus we had to cancel the festival and postpone it uh, for foreseeable future and that made us into a deep depression that began actually in first of Esfand which would be around 20th of uh, February and the festival was supposed to be in 25th of February Pan uh, Nohome Esfand in uh, around 28th of February 9th of Esfand and we suddenly had to cancel the festival which put all of the team into into crisis and personally after sending an email to many of our guests, the international guests that were supposed to come to the festival, I couldn't reply to any of them for two days until finally it was my birthday and actually Amir's birthday who's uh, here, who commented the last comment, and we just decided to initiate something online to, to meet our friends online to to have a birthday because we were already at home and, you know, it was sad. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. I hope to see you tomorrow for the session as well. Tomorrow we will talk with a much more wider variety of people from different continents. We we will talk with Jerry from uh, Nigeria, from Africa. We will talk with Kristina Matvienko, curator from Russia. We will talk with Atsushi from Japan, and we will have a guest, Michael from America. And uh, last but not least, the, the other guest for tomorrow would be Tengiz Khukhya, uh, one of my dear friends from Georgia, from Poti Theater in Georgia. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. خیلی ممنونم از اینکه اومدین. یادتون نره فردا هم بیاین فردا پنج تا دیگه مهمون داریم از جاهای مختلف دنیا دیگه فقط تمرکز روی اروپا نیستش. از ژاپن داریم، از روسیه داریم، از آفریقا داریم، از نیجریه، از امریکا داریم و از گرجستان داریم مهمونایی که داریم. خیلی ممنونم از اینکه امروز همراه ما بودین. Uh, stay tuned for the program of the festival. We will publish the first part of the program tonight. We begin our performances from tomorrow and we have a great opening for all of you guys. Have a good night.